you know, no one predicted 30 mile per hour winds, but it's better than rain. Good evening. And I'm proud to welcome you all to the 2023 Belfont graduation ceremony. I'm also proud to say this will be quicker than the award ceremony. So without further ado, we have a special guest with us tonight that will be leading us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Please welcome to the stage a 2018 graduate of Belfont Area High School who is currently stationed at Fairford Air Base in England, Senior Airman Ethan Shikitano. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Dominic Chicatano, if you'd like to make your way out to be reunited with your brother, please do so. Now I ask that you please continue standing for the playing of our The Star Spangled Banner by our Belfont Concert Band directed by Mr. Rabarczyk. And please remove your caps if you're able. Thank you. Now the concert band will also lead us in the playing of the Belfont Alma Mater, which you can all sing along to with the lyrics found in the back of your program. Thank you, and a special thank you to Cecilia Mazzacco for leading um, and conducting the Belfont Concert Band. I apologize. We will get there eventually. You may all now be seated. Alright. Now to us, 
the Belfont graduating class of 2023. Four years ago, for a reason I'll never quite understand, you entrusted in me the responsibility of president. And now, four years later, it has been an honor to represent, in my opinion, the finest class Belfont has ever seen. Now today, I face the challenge of articulating all that we have accomplished over the past seven years. Some suggestions have included rapping, singing, and even dancing. And although I love doing all those things, many have told me that I'm tone deaf, have no rhythm, and a personal favorite from my sister that I must be trying to sound that bad. So therefore, to save all your ears and eyes, I promise to refrain from those suggestions. But what I am good at, that everyone here can attest to, is talking, and I like to do it a lot. And so, therefore, buckle up, because we are in for a ride. Our journey begins in middle school, where our time together over the next three years is, well, interesting to say the least. First, we get recess again, a gift we almost lose thanks to a concussion from Jacob Knapp, but we will blame that on JJ. Then, we have Bams in Space, an event Ruby Biami will never live down an event that was supposed to be historic, but is ruined by no other than Froggy 101. Now finally, we get the birth of Mr. Caruso's fan club by his passionate homeroom, which persists to this day as deserving. So now we are promoted to high school. We will speed by ninth and 10th grade as COVID-19 sent us online, but that leaves us now arriving in 11th grade. Here, we are gifted a school-wide email chain that brought us, once again, interesting pictures of both Josh Weichel and Aiden Lammer. But most importantly, we are gifted the Batman of Belfont by no other than Gage Long. This now arrives us at senior year. We start with a gas leak that still none of us really know to this day what happened, but then we witness an undefeated girls swimming team go back to back, to back district titles. Which is later replicated by our boys baseball team who is now on their way to win a state championship. But I'll knock on wood to that. Off the field, we are blown away by Cecilia Stanton's cover of Black Dog by Led Zeppelin and the school's rock band and we are gifted an unforgettable, and I mean unforgettable, performance by a hypnotized Cooper Funk at the all-night party. Finally, our class ends the year by setting two historical feats in the annual Powder Puff game. One being that we are the first ever class to lose both years. But we're going to blame that on Mr. Deal and Mr. Caruso. And more importantly, in my opinion, our cheerleading team, led by Owen Seibel, wins the first ever halftime performance. And I can, yeah, cheer to that. And I can officially promise all of you, you will never see me in a four inch skirt again. You're welcome. This now brings us to today, our final destination. Although our trip together ends here, each of you will be taking the, your own wheel embarking on your own individual journeys. And in watching all that you've accomplished in this past seven years, I cannot wait to see all that you do in the near future. To all those in the audience, this is the class of 2023. 194 individuals of the most passionate, hardworking, and dedicated kind bound for a successful future. Thank you all for allowing me to be your president. Thank you. I would now like to welcome to the stage our superintendent, Mrs. Tammy Bernerfort. How do I follow that? Good evening. Welcome parents, friends, and families, students, teachers, staff members, distinguished guests, and board members, and warm greetings to the class of 2023. How wonderful is it to be all together on this beautiful evening. 
Tonight we pause on your journey through life to look back at, to what has been and to look to ahead to what might be. When you began this educational journey all those years ago, I am sure you and your family would have never predicted the bumps in the road and the challenges you may have faced over the past 13 years, but especially over those past three years. But there have been many successes, good times, laughter, friends, love, and fond memories along the way. You have seen success on the field, in the gyms, in the classrooms, and in the community. You have grown to be outstanding young adults, which is also a testament to the support of your parents, family, friends, teachers, and others you've met along the way. Please remember to thank them every chance you get. In fact, let's pause right now and thank them. Class of 2023, see if you can find a loved one in the crowd, wave, and we'll give them all a big applause. Thank you, parents. You learned so much and gained so much knowledge on your 13 year educational journey in our school district. For example, about 2,340 school days ago, you were just beginning to learn letters and sounds, to read words, and to put those words into sentences. I've had the very unique experience of being part of your journey into school, and now I am here with you at this momentous occasion tonight. Back in 2010, when the class of 2023 entered kindergarten, I was an elementary principal. I had the honor and pleasure to welcome the new kindergartners into Pleasant Gap Elementary School at that time. It was an exciting time when all of you started school. Your smiling faces were so much fun. I was so lucky to get to meet the kindergarten students and their parents and families at Pleasant Gap Elementary. During the first evening parent meeting and during the first few days of school, I read a book to the students. I'm sure it was some informational or some inspirational or some humorous book. And I'm sure some of the other elementary principals like Ms. Cutler, Dr. Vankis, Ms. Puckett, Mrs. Yontosh, and Mrs. Viana, to name just a few, read a book to you when you started school. Back then, I may have read the book, Kindergarten, Here I Come, which when I showed the book, every kid said they already saw it, but it was a brand new book. It set the first tone for your first days of your educational journey. Keeping with this theme, I'd like to take the opportunity to read one last inspirational book to you on this journey. As you go out into the world, whether it be across the globe, across the country, across the state, or even across the town, inevitably, one of the most common questions you will ever be asked is, where are you from? The main character in the book that I'd like to read tonight finds herself asking her grandfather about her heritage. This book was one of those selected by the Belfont Reads Committee this year, and I would like to share it with you. The book is called, Where Are You From? And it's by Shamile Said Mendez. So, as I read this book up here, like we do in, when you were in kindergarten and elementary school, you need somebody to show you the pictures. So Davis is going to show you the pictures. <clears throat> Ready, Davis. Where are you from, they ask. Is your mom from here? Is your dad from there, they ask. I'm from here, from today. Same as everyone else, I say. No, where are you really from, they insist. I ask Abuelo because he knows everything. And like me, he looks like he doesn't belong. Where am I from, I ask him. Abuelo thinks. His eyes squint like he's looking inside his heart for an answer. He says, you come from the Pampas, the open free land, he says. You come from the gaucho, brave and strong, from the brown river that cleanses and feeds the land that gives us the grain for our bread, the milk from the cows. You're from mountains so high, they tickle Senor Cielo's belly, where the condor roost his family and the jaguar prowls the night. But you're also from the warm blue oceans the copper warriors tried to tame, and the elegant palm trees stretched their fingers to caress. You're from hurricanes and dark storms, and a tiny singing frog that called the island people home when the sun goes to sleep. From this land where our ancestors built a home for all, even when they were in chains because of the color of their skin. You're from the grandmothers who searched for their grandchildren waiting, always waiting in a plaza, their white handkerchiefs wrapping the sorrow of their thoughts. You come from the sunshine that lights our path in this world and the rain that washes away our mistakes. But Abuelo, I ask, where am I really from? Abuelo laughs, you want a place? He points to his heart 
You're from here, from my love and the love of all those before us, from those who dreamed of you because of a song sung under the Southern Cross or the words in a book written under the light of the North Star. You, you are from all of us. I am. Short book, picture book, fortunately, um, Davis was our, our good MC, I guess. Uh, before I go any further about this book and before I go any further in my speech, I have to mention that, um, you know, if people were to ask me where I'm from, and there have been people ask me from, I'm from the neighboring valley in the neighboring school district, but during my time there, I had an English teacher who taught me that you cannot, under no circumstances, ever end a sentence with a preposition. So I just read a book to you, and now I'm going to read a speech to you where I end the sentence with a preposition. The irony in all this is that where I'm from is from a very strict English teacher who taught me these rules, the same strict English teacher that is Davis Corman's great aunt. That's irony. So this book led me to wonder what our class of 2023 graduates will say when they are asked the inevitable question in the future. I asked Mrs. Lloyd and Mrs. Krieger to ask their 12th grade English classes to answer that question from their perspectives now. What would they say if somebody asked, where are you from? Our students were nothing short of amazing once again. Mrs. Lloyd and Mrs. Krieger sent me about 29 different essays. I truly wish I had the time to read all 29 essays, but alas, this ceremony cannot be as long as the marathon of awards night. So I'll share snippets from their essays, same as from the book. Some students talked of the town, Belfont, in local areas. One student said, I am from Belfont, a small town outside of State College where one can always find an Italian restaurant. That's really true. I am from a small town. Not many people know about it, so we refer to it as next to State College. But it's more than that. I am from Belfont, where minds are bright and students go far and wide. I am from Belfont, where the, there are future innovators, engineers, teachers, musicians, and so much more. I am from Belfont. We are not just next to State College, but we're something so much more. Like the book, several students talked of their environment and some made connections to their parents or families. The great outdoors were mentioned many times. One student said, I am from outside in nature, taking long walks and learning to fish from my dad. I am from wooded areas and big pine trees, bright stars and long walks along the river. I am from ballparks and jungle gyms, climbing around like a child. I am from racetracks and garages, leaning on dirty benches, learning from pap and dad. Another said, I am from gravel roads, potholes, and no service. I'm guessing that was a COVID thing. I am from a history of moonshiners, farmers, and get-togethers. I am from redneck country, shotguns and bonfires. I am from trampolines overlooking the valley, dirt bikes, and four-wheelers. Another said, I am from scraping knees and throwing dirt on it, splashing in mud puddles and riding in trucks. I had to read that because I think our nurses are probably shivering now to know that you put dirt on a, a cut or a wound. I am from muddy creek beds, boots full of water and crawfish, bug spray and bandanas keeping away bugs. I am from a big creaky Victorian house with stained glass windows and hallways. You can slide down in polka dot socks. I am from the tall trees where the squirrels live, not filled trees full of splinters. And then finally, a student said, I am from a college town near fields of corn and mountains, cold water, winters and hot summers, right in the middle of the state. Rare severe weather to worry about, but we do have whiteouts. Uh, I do worry about the weather, just saying. Some of the students talked about their childhood memories at home or at school. One said, I am sitting, walking into elementary school, scared but excited. I am walking, touring the high school. It's so big, it's so confusing. It is unimaginable I will be here. I am now touring campuses around the country. Wonder, hope, achievement bursting from me. Still, I look behind. I do not forget what I see. A light so bright I could never forget. Another said, and we're going to fix this one, I am from Belfont Elementary School, the field day, the lip sync performances for the ages, the unforgettable memories, the 40 yard dash, and the sweat due to no AC. We're working on that. We're working on that. I am from creative days with the absence of technology. I am from the PBS days where my favorite character was Elmo. I am from the days where things in life were simple. Another said, I am from swing sets, macaroni and cheese, and playing tag. I am from Legos, building worlds and wondrous adventures. I am from scouting, camping outside, and gaining life skills. Another said, I am from the memories of childhood, the nostalgic feeling when looking back, wishing for a time seemingly free of stress, but glad where it got me today. That's where I'm from. 
I am from weekends at camp and trips to the curve. I am from staying up all night and watching SpongeBob. I am really hoping that was not a school night. My school is where I'm from, with friends that I've grown up with, with homework that wasn't always welcomed, with teachers that I will miss when I move on. I am from my home, with my parents and siblings I cannot live without. And it's hard to believe that I will be away from it all in months on end. But the most important thing, perhaps, is I am from myself, someone who has learned and grown through these years, someone who is uniquely themselves, someone who can be from so much more in the future. Some students talked about their love of activities, such as sports, music, books over the 13 years. Some spoke of spe spe specific special activities that they took part in during their high school years. One said, I am from long nights reading by flashlight, escaping the world with paper and words. I am from fantasy and mystery, action and romance, hopeful and magical, depressing and tragic. I am from worlds created by a book, the safest of havens. I am from Jane Eyre to Harry Potter and everything in between. Another said, I am from a place where beauty comes from your injury energy and how you treat others, from women who support one another no matter who and no matter what they love to do. I am from a place where your passion for something would never go unnoticed. I am from musician and enjoyer of culture. I am from the arts. I am from hip hop and jazz, but also Bach and Beethoven. I come from a big softball family. I live at the softball field. Even before I could play, I was at the field watching. After I started playing, I never left that field. Another said, to be specific, I'm from homecoming parades and throwing treats to the young children. I'm from the football games, the bright lights, and the cheering from the crowds. I am from the days and nights marching around a field to a place I'll never remember again. I'm from the actors I once shared a stage with. I am from the group of people I never want to forget, yet I may never see again. Some students talked about their families and their friends. The first one struck a chord just because I have one myself. It says, I am, annoying. I am from an annoying younger sister whose love is so much more persistent. I am from little her, unknowing what her future will bring, but that is our tying link. One said simply, I am from a small town where friends are family. I am many things, but it all starts with the people who raised me. I am from a family of love and a family of greatness. I am from hugs and kisses from grandma and goodnight kisses from my parents. I am from the beauty and elegance of womanhood. I am from the hardworking and persevering family. I am from the refreshing taste of chocolate milk every morning and the smell of blossoming spring season. I am from the past that has shaped me into who I am today and who I will be every day after today. And another said very simply, I am from the relentless kindness and tranquility of my mother just as she is from hers. I am from my friends who have taught me what my value is, both good and bad. I am from my teachers who have showed me what it's like to be a good person. I am from my peers who have been with me since the start of it all and now to the very end. I am from the woods and hunting with my dad and Pat, learning the things that matter. I am from the green turf and pushing myself to win, applying that idea to life. I am from the adventures of my dad and learning not to take life too seriously. I'm from the wisdom of my mom and learning how to be successful. That was a snippet from 27 of the poems. I squeezed it all in. There are two particular poems that seem particularly touching to me that I'd like to share in their entirety. One student wrote, I am from kitchen dancing and family meals. I am from running outside adventures, running from monsters and beasts with my siblings stomping behind me, never missing a beat. I am from, if you're going to do it, do it well, a family that will saying that will never fail. I am from my parents' appearance, but in my own look, with my own morals, writing my own book. I am from my mentors' encouragements and the lessons they bring. I am from loud and bold relatives with characters varying from mine, but never lacking in shine. I'm from Monica and Marlin, family is everything and time will fly. These have given me perspective in me they reside. I am blessed in the environment in which I sometimes resent, with faith instilled in habits that I cannot bend. I am proud even in my bother, and even though forgetful of my privilege, aware that I could not have or desire any better. And the other one is, I am from brokenness, but I am from love. I am the product of a divide, like Moses parting the sea. And I am waves, I am the explore, exploration, a world so unknown, figuring out where I belong. I am a foreign camper, sleeping in a tent. I am a voyager, not knowing what's next. I am an ast astronaut, this car is where I sleep, is going to the moon. I am love, and I am forgiveness. I am a lesson, and how to let go. I am a hero, I am a villain, all depending on what chapter you read. I am from bunk beds and the unknown faces, the green beans and the slices of bread, but most importantly, I am for my family and love and faith, and I am okay. 
Your real journey is just beginning as you go out into life. So take with you your knowledge, your experiences, and laughs from this part of your journey. If you hit a bump in the road or face challenges, once again, pers persevere through the tough times. Keep your memories, friendships, and family close to your heart so you will always remember that life and your journey are truly about the love you share with the people around you each day. I feel so blessed that I've had the opportunity to be on your pathway for the last 13 years and with you tonight. Parents and students, thank you so much for allowing me to be part of your journey. So the class of 2023, I wish each and every you, every one of you, only the best as you begin the next 1 million miles of your journey. Most importantly, when you were asked where you're from, never forget, as the book says, you are from here in our hearts, from our love and the love of all those before us, from those who dreamed of you. You are from all of us. Best wishes always. At this time, I'd like to bring Mr. Michael Fettison, the high school principal, to the stage. Good evening. I'd like to welcome everyone again to the 2023 Belfont Area High School commencement and offer my sincere congratulations to all of our graduates. I also want to thank all of our family and friends of the graduates for all your years of love and support in helping our students reach this milestone this evening. I'd also like to extend my heartfelt thanks to the faculty and staff of Belfont Area High School, the Belfont Area School District, and the members of the school directors. You've all had a hand in helping these students achieve their goals and their dreams. I'd also like to thank everyone that spent countless hours with this year's activities. Specifically, I'd like to thank your class advisors, Mrs. McManus and Mrs. Smith. Give it up for them. Of course, your wonderful graduation coordinator, Fitz, Mr. Ed Fitzgerald. Just forget about it. It's not going to stay on, right? Yeah. Um, also, our high school and district administration, um, our high school counselor, specifically your senior counselor, Mrs. Pigetti. Mrs. Pigetti, give a wave. Um, of course, the office staff, the technology and athletic departments, uh, building maintenance and the custodial staff. Special shout out to Mr. Bill Kane, our lead custodian. Um, Bill has been a part of these awards and graduation ceremonies, I think, for the last 29 years, and this will be his last as he plans to retire later this summer. So congratulations to Bill. And also Mr. Aaron Bartow. Aaron, give a wave way down there in the blue. Baby, there he is. Um, Aaron makes sure all these things are up and running as well, you know, making sure the stages are here. And I think most importantly, making sure the air conditioning stays on when we're inside. Um, and Aaron, again, this will be his last. He will be retiring at the end of the month as well. So Aaron, thank you for everything. Congratulations. And I would be remiss if I didn't mention tonight Mrs. Judy Ripka for the innumerable hours that she spent to prepare the programs, the diplomas. There's Judy. Yes, applaud for Judy. Thank you. preparing the uh, the programs the diplomas the packets for tonight's commencement you all are the support system which has made this possible with your continued encouragement you've paved the way to this commencement so seniors in the class of 2023 please give us one more round of applause for all of those folks that have helped us I wanted to offer a few of my stories and anecdotes and experience that might help guide you as you leave here tonight if my count is correct, you are the 139th graduating class of Belfont Area High School. And as the 139th class, you are certainly unique. It goes without explanation that your experience over the past four years has been one of a lifetime. And of course, there's been frustrations that came along with a lot of changes, but it reminds me how fortunate we are and how we can find inspiration and strength close to home. So my hope tonight is that you find that something that gives you strength when you need it most. Today marks a significant milestone in your lives. We gather here not only to celebrate your accomplishments, 
but also to em embrace a profound concept that has changed your journey and shaped your journey thus far, and that is the idea of change. It's an integral part of the human experience, and as you prepare to take on the future, I want you to reflect on the power of change and the incredible potential it holds for you. Throughout your years at Belfont Area High School, you've witnessed change in all its forms. You've grown and evolved, not just in knowledge and skills, but in perspectives, values, and aspirations. The world around us is transformed too, presenting us with new challenges and opportunities. Whether it was adjusting to a new school and a new schedule, or virtual learning, or ever-changing rules about health and safety, to making it back again full circle, this has been an ever-changing part of your high school experience. And that change can be intimidating, uncomfortable, and sometimes, quite frankly, overwhelming. But it's through change that we discover our strengths and realize our fullest potential. So as you step out into the world, I challenge you to embrace change with open arms. You can't afford to remain stagnant, for the world is different each day. The skills you've acquired, the lessons you've learned, and the relationships you have built have prepared you to navigate the uncertain waters ahead. So go and be adaptable, be flexible, and be open-minded in your approach to life's challenges. And although change can be uncomfortable, it brings immense opportunities. Just this past year, there was a number of staff that had left the high school, and there's been some new challenges that I've had to face. Things that I haven't had to do before, things that I haven't had to do for several years that I've had to kind of go back and dust off. And some of our other staff have had to do the same as well. And we've had to remind ourselves that all of those opportunities were room for us to grow and learn and be more resilient and ultimately become stronger and more knowledgeable. And, you know, there were many times of doubt and we had to keep telling ourselves, jokingly, I think, it'll be fine, right? It'll be fine. What's the worst that can happen? It'll be fine. And so far, I think it served us well. Um, everything has turned out fine even if maybe sometimes we didn't exactly believe it was going to turn out that way. But as the years progressed, we began to embrace that change more often. It's essential to embrace that change and grow personally and transform yourself. Keep expanding your horizons and break free from the limitations that you might put upon yourselves. Now, I don't know what maybe you all do in your free time. Sometimes when I go home just to unwind, I, I get on this thing called TikTok. Don't know if you've heard of it. A few of you? Is it a thing? Okay. Um, it can be a great way to laugh and unwind. <laughs> Couldn't have failed harder, right? Couldn't have failed harder. That's fine. That's fine. I'm used to it. Um, but there's some inspirational things in there too. Um, and some of those came across my feed recently that I wanted to share. And one was just a, an average person, no one that's really particularly famous, and she was talking about change. Um, and so maybe if you think of a change that's happened, maybe this will help you kind of work through that. But she said when she's talking about that, remember that that change that's happened to you, if it would have happened any other way, it would have. If it would have happened any other way, it would have. Okay, essentially saying that that change happening the way that it did happened for a reason. Okay. And maybe that reason was to push you out of your comfort zone. Maybe it was to make you tougher, realize the person who you really are, what you really have inside. So it's easy always to look back and question, you know, should I have done something different? Should I try to get a different response? What could I have done differently? But remember, you can't hold yourself to a standard for which you have not yet been accountable. So don't go back and regret those things. Don't think you could have done something different. Just know that when you know better, you'll do better. And if it could have happened any other way, it would have. But it didn't. And so here you are in the here and now, and you're ready for the next step. Each new experience, each new skill that we require, and each person you meet has the potential to shape you in profound ways. Some might lift you up in positive change, and you might learn more from folks who do things the way maybe that you don't like. Some people will stay in your life for decades, and others will be there for just a season. Now, this was another TikTok video. Let's see if you know this one. Uh, Steve Harvey. You ever hear Steve Harvey? Family Feud? All right, better on that one. Thank goodness. Um, but Steve Harvey, again, was talking about change, and he said something I wanted to share, and that is, 
there ain't nothing you can do about what's going to happen to you. Ain't nothing you can do about what's going to happen to you. You can't stop life from happening, but you can do something about it. Life is 10% what happens to you and 90% what you do about it. So students, if you uh, leave here tonight, life is going to continue to change. You'll start to go your own directions. You'll meet new people. You'll make different choices. And your time together as this graduating class in the here and now is fading. It's fading. Change is already beginning to happen. But remember that the journey of self-discovery and growth is lifelong. And it's through change that you truly become who you were meant to be. So those things that are happening, you're going to move away, you're going to miss your friends, you're, you're worried about the next journey. Don't be upset, don't be angry, don't be sad. Enjoy this moment as the Belfont Area High School class of 2023. You're capable of great and amazing things. Start by making positive change by lifting up others, helping others to feel included, and being a peaceful presence in your community. Remember, positive change starts with small actions and each individual has the power to make a difference. I hope you keep that with you as you leave here tonight and as you travel across the world. So class of 2023, I wish you all the very best as you leave Belfont Area High School. May you have a life full of joy and happiness and good health. Congratulations. Let us now welcome to the stage the 2023 Belfont Area High School Class Valedictorian, Kate Rarick. Four years ago, I was given the honor of speaking on behalf of this class at our eighth grade promotion. During that speech, I spoke about the ways in which everything we had learned in both school and life would prepare us for these past four years. I compared high school to a mountain, one that we would climb, taking our own separate paths, but still trekking towards the top together. Yet I focused most on the feeling of accomplishment that we would feel upon reaching the summit of this metaphorical mountain. And in doing so, I attempted to predict the emotions and mindsets that we are experiencing. I claimed that we would look into the future, see our path in life, and be excited and ready to follow it. I presumed that this moment now should be centered around the future and the things in our lives that are still incomplete. But now that we have reached this moment, I would like to do something that I don't do very often. I would like to admit that four years ago, as I stood on a stage and spoke to you all, I was wrong. I was so caught up in my desire to leave middle school and move on to the next chapter of my life that I forgot to think about the chapter that was ending and I assumed that I would do the same thing now. A commencement ceremony is about beginning and this beginning is most likely what you're being told to focus on. I know that everyone wants to learn about our plans and goals and dreams, and these are all very important things, but I do not think that the future is where our focus should be. So whether you can see clearly the path that you will take or you have no idea what tomorrow holds, I do not think that tomorrow is important in this instant. I think that right now is about yesterday and the 1,378 yesterdays that came before it since the first day of freshman year. These are the days that we should be focusing on. Our accomplishment is not in the beginning that graduation represents, but in the journey that it took to get here, because I know that it has not been easy for any of us. So now, instead of thinking about the future, think of how many times you told yourself that you just had to get through the week or the day. How many tests and assignments you stressed over, how many shifts you worked, how many times you felt like you couldn't fit everything, into 24 hours. How many times did you feel like you were not going to be able to make it to this moment? How many times did you fall and not think that you could get back up? 
I know that this happened to me constantly. And so I'm very proud of all of you because despite this, we have all made it. I'm also incredibly thankful to the friends, family, teachers, and coaches who helped to pick me back up every time I fell because without them, I know that I would not be here today. And so even though these were moments of struggle, I do not think that they should be forgotten or ignored because they were a very real part of everyone's journey to graduation and overcoming them is something that is truly amazing, worthwhile, and impressive. And amongst these low moments, I hope that you also experience times of joy and happiness, some of these stemming from a feeling of accomplishment and others from seemingly nowhere. I hope that you are experiencing that joy now as you reflect on all that you have done. I know that the future is promising for each and every one of you. You are all strong, intelligent, unique, talented, and creative people. And I have no doubt that you will each find success in whatever path you choose to follow. But I also know that you've done so much more already, and I am incredibly proud of every person in this class. I look forward to seeing what you all do, but I am truly appreciative and blessed to have been witness to your strength and perseverance. Thank you for being an amazing class, and congratulations. And now, I would like to welcome back to the stage your class president, class president, salutatorian, first vice president of Pennsylvania FBLA, and second place finisher in seventh grade biology experiment design, Davis Corman. <laughs> Thank you, Kate. And I would like to know I'm so mad to this day that I lost that competition in seventh grade, but I guess it was preparing me to be second. But regardless, I wouldn't want to be second. Yeah, I wouldn't want to be second to anybody else here. So nevertheless, I'm honored to stand before you once again as a class of Victorian. Being the talker I am, I was pretty happy. Oh. Yes, I tossed it. Yeah, we got that. Being the talker I am, I was pretty happy to find out I'd be giving two speeches at graduation. However, I've also come to find that many of you find me extremely long-winded. And so therefore, I took your hints and I promised to keep this message short. You're welcome, Ms. Krieger. Now, here you are. This message I have today is simple, yet it's something I learned only a few months ago. And I hate to get deep on all of you guys, but this message is too important. And I apologize in advance if I tear up a little, I am my father's son, and although he is, was a senator, he's also the biggest baby I know. But I love him for that. So anyway, for those who don't know, in January, I unexpectedly lost my grandmother. She was quite literally my best friend, someone who I love beyond words can describe. I mention this moment in my life today, not because of that sad story, but to share with you the weeks after her passing that forever shifted my outlook on life. Something a little more bright. See, what I quickly came to find was that I had been given some of the best friends anyone could ever ask for. Ruby, Maddie, Alex and Brayson, and so many more, especially you, Cappy. These individuals stepped up for me when I couldn't. They were my support, unconditionally and unwavering. I'll never forget looking back in the pews at her funeral, seeing all my friends, including my basketball team, there in support of me. But this wasn't because I was sad. I wasn't crying because I was sad. I was crying because of how lucky I had, I, I was to have these individuals. This moment in my life taught me the importance of your found family. These are the individuals that you have not through blood, but have built through bonds. These are the individuals who are with you throughout every step of the way. And so my message today is quite simple. Cherish your found family. See, for so long, I had done the opposite. I prioritized my education and career goals while sacrificing my time with others. What this experience taught me is that, is that the diploma I was working for doesn't represent a grade or an achievement, it represents an experience. An experience you made with some of the closest people around you, your found family. And your family is not limited to just your closest friends. My found family consisted of teachers like Lloyd and Krieger, Profe and Smith and Leitzel who were at times like a second mother to me. 
And don't even get me started with Mr. Fitz, who is a person that has played such an impact in my life, words cannot begin to describe. And I would be remiss not to mention people like Noah Abereg, who, who li quite literally saved me through AP Gov, or Kate and Cecilia, who were always ready to revise my essays, essays at any hour of the day. And the list goes on. In essence, as you can see, my found family here at Belfont was my everything. By prioritizing these relationships, I created a community that brought me where I am here today, something I would have never achieved without. So today, I challenge all of you to reflect on your own found family. Maybe these are individuals you go to the gym with every day. I'm looking at you, Cooper and JP, or maybe these are the individuals who you have survived tech rehearsals with, or maybe it's your closest friends. Whoever your family is made up of, cherish these relationships. Hold them tight and never lose touch. Because as I have mentioned, they will be there with you throughout every step of the way. To the class of 2023, I love you all, and it's been an honor to share these past four years with you. And this is Davis Corman finally signing off. Now for the fun part. I am beyond excited to introduce the two of finest 12th grade English teachers Belfont has ever had and our commencement speakers here today, Miss Jessica Lloyd and Miss Kelly Krieger. finally made it big, eh? <laughs> so don't you think that today is a day for a celebration to celebrate big? Yeah, let's get out the big mugs. Yeah. Okay. That's All what right. I'm talking about. All right, so we know that a lot of you sometimes are wondering what we're talking about. We're standing in the hallways, drinking our coffee, talking to one another before class, usually late to class. Um, so, a lot of you are think, were thinking that maybe uh, we're talking about you guys and trying to like give each other the tea on our students. Wait a minute, I thought you wanted coffee. No, 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 no. That's what the kids say when they want to gossip. The tea. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. All right, I get it. <laughs> so, uh, so, basically, what you're saying is like our hallway coffee talks are like a whole vibe. Did I get that one right? Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. kind of like a vibe. Okay. Uh, uh, Owen Seibel, he's a whole vibe. Ah, uh, uh, yeah. okay. I Don't get it now. Agree? Yeah, yeah, I okay. get that one. Okay. All right. So anyways, you were mentioning about the kids. They've always wondered what we were talking about. Do you think we should tell them? Um, I do. Okay, let's tell okay. them. All right. So this year, we've been talking a lot about what we were going to say at this graduation speech, and we thought it'd be a good idea to come up with a list of things from high school that you should never forget. So we asked your other teachers what they thought were the most important things that you should remember from their classes. And here's what they had to say. Okay. Okay. All right. So here it goes. All right. Here. So Mr. Trumbull thinks that you should know that function is a rule where you put one number in and get out exactly one number. And the domain of a function is a set of the numbers that you are allowed to put into a function, conjunction, function, no, unction, no, mass. Just calm down. Calm down. Okay. okay. No one's going to remember any of that anyways, Trumbull. No. Okay. Okay. No. All right. Rabarchek thinks that you should always remember that chord progressions and music really should follow a pattern instead of being random and that music does have some roles to follow depending on the style that you're composing and that Casablanca is one of the greatest films of all time. 
Mrs. Welsh wants you to gather round the table and make sure that you always remember that you should shade that drawing just a little bit more. Uh, Mrs. Durney thinks you should always remember the amendments and the court cases that challenged them. But how many of you are really going to remember that? Oh, <laughs> you forgot she was here tonight, didn't you? I did. I did. Mrs. Edinger wants you to forget that, never to forget that mitochondria is the powerhouse of a cell, and Mrs. Poorman thinks that agriculture is the most important because everyone's got to eat. Mrs. Weaver thinks you should remember that a roux is the base thickener to most white sauces, soups, and gravies. <laughs> and we think that it's super important for you to remember how to cite sources properly using MLA formatting. Oh, and also remember that Boy Beowulf is the oldest piece of English literature. Okay. And okay. Let's okay. stop. We okay. Can't, we, can't, we can't keep lying to you. Yeah. All right. You're right. So nobody's going to remember any of that, and that's okay. <laughs> Those are the things your teachers think you should remember, but we actually think there's something more important for you to remember from high school. So, we asked a few of your teachers what they remember from their own high school experiences. Mr. Trumbull will remember hanging out at his best friend's house every weekend with all of their closest friends. Oh, and how beautiful his senior prom date looked, Mrs. Trumbull. <laughs> All right, Mrs. Smith said that she will never forget Friday night football games with her friends. Mrs. Cypro said she'll remember all the good times she had playing sports in high school, including 6 a.m. practices, waffle shop breakfast, and pranking coaches after district wins. And Mr. Virgilio, well, he's going to remember stealing snacks from people's desks, goofing around in the hallway, and yelling out random things to scare people? No, John, these are supposed to be high school memories, not what you do now. <laughs> Profe will remember all those good times she had with her friends, especially the ones that her parents didn't find out about until later. <laughs> Mrs. Emil will remember how amazing it felt to finally get her driver's license, drive around town with her friends, enjoying the time with no real cares. Those were the friends who would later become bridesmaids in her wedding and whom she still talks to today. When I personally look back, I remember those two seconds of the basketball, basketball game I got to play <laughs> and what a good job I did at warming the bench. For, okay. okay. <laughs> no, but what I really remember is, is those weekend nights I spent with my closest friends and that band nerds really do have more fun. <laughs> <laughs> I remember playing volleyball with my closest friends, uh, Friday night snowboarding with ski club, and asking my parents for forgiveness for all the things I probably shouldn't have done. <laughs> These examples prove that it's not about the grades you earned or the tests that you failed. It's about the connections that you've made with one another. And I've seen this class make all support each other in all kinds of different ways, whether it's academic support, arguing over that one point that you missed on an assignment with me, I've seen you support one another outside of class, attending FBLA competitions, musicals, screaming from the stands as part of Raider Nation, just truly believing in one another. So if you all take a look back, the moments from high school, when you were proud or excited or sad, you'll think about the people that were there to share those moments. You'll think about the people that you laughed with and cried with, you'll think about all of those things, right? It's the people that you'll remember. So moving forward, you want to surround yourself with people who will help you celebrate your victories and push you to be better and occasionally spill the tea with you. <laughs> so while you're not going to remember the 28th Amendment... Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Sorry about that. We teach English. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Okay. <laughs> What I meant to say is that you might not remember the things you learned in high school classes, but you'll remember the friendships. One more thing we want you to remember. You'll remember the people that stopped into the waffle shop parking lot late at night and gave you a hug when you needed it most. And you'll remember the people and the memories that made it, made it here together. So even though you might not have found that special group of friends in high school that you connected with, Please remember that sometimes your best life begins as soon as you leave high school. I know I, set, I met some of my best friends later in life. 
<laughs> it doesn't matter what path you take when you leave here, whether you're headed off to college or the military or a full-time job, what matters are the people that you surround yourself with. So, good luck with your futures. Good luck with finding those people that raise you up in the good times and the bad. With that, dear students, please raise your cups, your coffee cups, <laughs> and do a final cheers with us to the amazing class of 2023. Please welcome back to the podium, Mr. Michael Fedison. Okay, seniors, are you ready? Okay. Members of the class of 2023, each of you is to be recognized for having met all of the requirements for graduation of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania and the Belfont Area School District. And having earned that right and privilege of being graduated from Belfont Area High School, I therefore present the class of 2023 for graduation to Mr. John Gazar, President of the Belfont Area School Board. Kate Carol Rarick, Secretary, Valedictorian, Summa Cum Laude. <laughs> Davis Theodore Corman, President, Salutorian, Summa Cum Laude. Catherine Lee Nugent, Vice President, Summa Cum Laude. <laughs> Maya Maylin Uchida, NUP, Treasurer, Summa Cum Laude. Noah David Abereg, summa cum laude. <laughs> Olivia Carol Abereg, summa cum laude.
Pauline Francis Alterio, cum laude. Gary Thomas Angle, cum laude. Aiden Joshua Appleyard. Madigan Ruth Ash, cum laude. Olivia Lynn Astari, magnum cum laude. Elizabeth Arlene Ackerman. Wesley Jonathan Badger. Brooke Cornelia Bagwell, summa cum laude. Zane Mason Bailey, magnum cum laude. <laughs> Abigail Joyce Ann Barone. Carly Shea Bechtel. <laughs> Joshua Isaac Beers, summa cum laude. Lauren Kathleen Benner, cum laude. <laughs> Noah Jeffrey Benner, magna cum laude. Alan Jamesdale Benner, magnum cum laude. <laughs> Megan Elaine Bennett. Lorelai Sage Bursell. <laughs> Kaylee Nicole Barenti.
Allison Grace Berkey, Magnum Cum Laude. Ruby Rose Biame, Magda Kimalde. <laughs> Bethany Marie Book, Summa Cum Laude. Madeline Mary Grace Boone. <clears throat> Ava Celia Bressler, magna cum laude. Camden Michael Brooks. Freya Lynn Brown. Taylor Elizabeth Brown. Logan Joshua Cable. Josiah Alexander Cadman, summa cum laude. Aliyah May Caldwell. Nathan Robert Caparel. <laughs> Dominic Anthony Caparella, magna cum laude. Asen Allen Carson. Sean Patrick Clampett. Michael Roy. Coleman. <laughs> Ava Shea Comb. <laughs> Tyler London Conaway. Jocelyn Elizabeth Cook, summa cum laude. <clears throat> Jessica 
Zane Michael Corman. Hannah Jeanette Coslow, summa cum laude. Aaron Kathleen Cronin, summa cum laude. Riley Lynn Dan, magna cum laude. Nathaniel Lee Davidson, summa cum laude. Gage Allen Day. Gabrielle Rose Dietrich, cum laude. Hannah Elizabeth Dietrich. Lorna Elizabeth Dixon, summa cum laude. <laughs> Sophia May Dory. Danielle Diane Nicole Dorshenko. <laughs> Faye Elizabeth Dubin, magna cum laude. Alexander John Ebling, magna cum laude. Chase David Ebling, cum laude. Kimberly Suzanne Edwards. <laughs> Haley Ann Englert. Autumn Marie Iyer, cum laude. Lillian Elise Iyer.
Taylor Elizabeth Fallon. Liberty Brianne Fike, cum laude. <laughs> Luke Robert Fisher. Nathaniel Allen Fisher. <laughs> Caleb Scott Fraser. Cooper Andrew Funk, cum laude. <laughs> Noah Russell Gadsby, summa cum laude. Katie Noel Galloway. <laughs> Athena Ray Garvin, summa cum laude. Taylor Jade Gates. <laughs> Catherine Elizabeth Gearhart. Aiden Joseph Gingrich. Frederick Michael Grove. Eva Sue Ginther. <laughs> Lily Ann Ginther. Caden Elio Gazar, cum laude. Trenton Allen Hagen. Lucas James Hackney. Andrew Miller Haldeman.
Sydney Marie Hamilton, cum laude. Benjamin Lynn Hargrove, summa cum laude. Haley Lynn Hare, cum laude. Kirsten Marie Hickey. Madison Marie Hockenberry, magna cum laude. Grayson Marie Holderman, cum laude. Emma Catherine Homan, cum laude. Ronan Maximus Hauser. Lance Michael Irwin. Nash Robert Irwin, cum laude. Cadence Destiny Jabko. Adrian Brooke Jackson, summa cum laude. Ooh. Lillian Madison James, cum laude. Aaron James Johnson, summa cum laude. Then Justin Kelly. <laughs> Alexander Carol Keys.
Dane Nicole Klein. Jacob Newman Knapp. Alexis Shea Kopcha, magna cum laude. William Michael Koth. Kaylin Louise Custaborder. Sebastian J. LaJoy. Nathaniel Hardman Lambert. Aiden Cole Larimer. Kara Elizabeth Leonori. Bailey Elise Little. Matthew Robert Loesch. Gage Michael Long. Elizabeth Kendall Lovrack, magna cum laude. Wyatt Michael Lowry. Mackenzie Lynn Parks McGuffey, cum laude. Malik Joseph Marshall. Emma Rose Matsko, magna cum laude. Natalie Ann Mattern, summa cum laude. Yeah. Cecilia Salome Mazzacco, summa cum laude. Donato Furio Mazzotta. <laughs> Dylan, 
Gavin Richard McCauley. Cecilia Christine McGovern, magna cum laude. <laughs> Maxwell Lane Bekenrick, cum laude. Alan Mark McMahon. <laughs> Levi Sampson McNichol. Madison Nicole Melius, magna cum laude. <laughs> Katie Marie Malat. Noah Stephen Morelia. <laughs> Cody Robert Merrill. <laughs> Colson Arden Michael. Landon Whitley Miller. Summer Dawn Moore. Daniel James Murray. Maxwell Glenn Murray. Finley Ray Musser. Magna cum laude. <laughs> Kiera Alexis Nairhood, summa cum laude. Jocelyn Amara Now, cum laude. <laughs> Jack Matthew Nedro. Zoe Ellen Nichols. <laughs> 
Lillian Ardell North, magna cum laude. Kayla Lynn Nyman. Jeremiah Jameson Andresic, summa cum laude. Christopher Allen Payton. Emmeline Claire Pringle, magnum cum laude. Taji Shamel Ramsour McGinnis. Tyler Samuel Walter Rice. <laughs> Haley Nicole Remy, magna cum laude. Victoria Grace Rittenhouse, cum laude. Riley Lynn Roan, cum laude. Haley Erica Rogers. <laughs> Peter Andrew Rose the Fourth. Jonathan Wayne Ross. Emma Jean Rossman, cum laude. Dolores Rose Russo. <laughs> Jamal David Saunders, Jr. Dominic James Chicatano. Owen James Seibel. Cora Faye Sigworth, summa cum laude.
Chloe Reagan Sell, summa cum laude. Addison Lewis Fisher Shawley. Faith Marie Shawley. Mackenzie Marie Shea. Jacob William Scherer. Layla Grace Schilling. Alyssa Marie Shively. Okay. Kale Ray Shook. Stephen Landon Simpson, summa cum laude. Jacob David Skrzycki, magna cum laude. Oh, yeah! Amber Jane Small, cum laude. Kyla Rochelle Smith. Madison J. Smith. Olivia Margaret Smith, summa cum laude. Chelsea Marie Snook. Daniel Charles Squire. <laughs> Donald Kenneth Squires the Fourth.
Jordan Don Stallman, summa cum laude. Cecilia Ann Stanton, summa cum laude. <laughs> Caleb Andrew Stock. Curtis Andrew Summers. <laughs> Jacob Hunter Thomas. Ashley Nicole Timko. <laughs> and Elise Nicole Uring, magna cum laude. Aaliyah Grace Von Blon. <laughs> Megan Elizabeth Walters, magna cum laude. Kira Arlene Weaver. <laughs> Abigail Lynn Weiser. Aiden John Wetzler. <laughs> Brianna Jean Williams. <laughs> Logan Ryder Williams, cum laude. Emery Michael Ryan Yerrick.
Hare 